Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Beck. Welcome to In the Community. Guiding Light is a ministry in Lima focused on reaching women in crisis. Their website states, we are dedicated to providing a safe environment that strives to educate women in learning how to possess qualities needed to be successful, but more importantly, learning how to effectively care for themselves and their families. The original Guiding Light home is located on South Main Street in Lima. It started as a state licensed maternity home, but now ministers to moms to be and any woman in need, including women facing domestic violence, substance abuse, mental health challenges, sex trafficking, homelessness, and more. In addition to the Guiding Light home, the ministry also offers the resting place, another location that provides, as the name implies, a place to rest to find solace from the troubles and learn to truly know the one true God who loves each person unconditionally. You see, Guiding Light founder Julianne Burke will tell you the ministry is guided by the light, capital L, the light of Christ. I had an opportunity to recently sit down with Julianne, discuss the needs in our community and the transformation of lives that she has experienced, women who have been through the program called Guiding Light. Julianne, so glad to have an opportunity to talk with you. It's been just incredible to witness what God has done for more than a decade. Mm -hmm. I mean, last year you celebrated the 10th anniversary of Guiding Light, so we're into beyond the 11 years now. Let's start by just, let's just talk about what Guiding Light offers to this community. Right, awesome. Um, well, we are transitional housing for women in crisis. We started out serving young moms and then the need came for more uh, women in crisis with addiction, mm. domestic violence, being human trafficked, all kinds of things, concerns, um, broken relationships, just unable to, uh, having setbacks, unable to get life together. Mm. And so what we do is when they come in, we meet their basic needs from the beginning. We help them to feel belonging, um, acceptance. Uh, we begin to like find out what are your needs. Um, we build short-term and uh, long-term goals. So we kind of know the direction of what they're lacking in and what they need right away. And then we start like having conversation weekly with them, like um, you know who they are, what they've worked on, where they're going, what's their plans, and how are they building relationship back with family if things have been broken in their family relationships. Um, do they have their kids or not? Do they need to get them back? Mm -hmm. um, and so we look at all those different dynamics because it starts in the home. It starts in the mm -hmm. family. And if you can um, begin to identify how are they going to, uh, you know, get that established in their home and create a good foundation, then they can start from there and build their life back because they have nothing left. And so we have a life skills program there. We teach them healthy ways of eating and nutrition. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a support group. We have Bible study. They do devotions every morning. Of course, to help with the structure, they've got chores every day that they all contribute. Um, also a meal that they have to prepare for the whole house. Uh, so they take on those responsibilities to give back. And it's almost like dorm living um, per se, but it is really where everybody's there trying to accomplish similar goals, to get productive, to get income, so they can get out on their own and then they can take care of their families better. In the meantime, there's healing going mm. on. You know, I might have somebody who has a chip on their shoulder when they come in. They're very angry at the world. They're angry mm. at God. They're mad. You know, you see it happening. And then after a couple of weeks, they start to mellow out. There's more peace. We pray for peace. Mm. Um, and so they're just a little bit less um, anxious um, and they start to get more established and stable. And I know one of the key things we try to do is speak into their life mm. to help build their identity back. Because usually in their brokenness, they've lost themselves and they're mm. vulnerable and they've gone through things because, you know, they've been at compromising, um, compromising for less than the best of what God has mm. for them. And they have no idea who they are, perhaps, or maybe they used to, mm. um, but they've lost themselves. And so we try to encourage them to build their lives in knowing who God says you are, that you do have value. You do have self-worth. You are something special and um, God can use you and mm -hmm. you were here for a divine purpose. So all of those things enwrapped where even like in the recovery, they go to other agencies to get help for those classes or, you know, counseling that they start to get um, and, and people that will help like encourage them to be back in their
kids' lives or, you know, just mm -hmm. do those things and, and mentorship. And so we try to bring in every aspect that we can for them to be healthy and whole again. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of things. As you were explaining all that, I felt like I was kind of seeing a picture of Lima. And those of us who don't live in certain areas don't always see what goes on in the lives of these women and these families. Mm -hmm. But there is a need here. Truly. And I'm sure that you, being in this position, truly see just how much, like you say, sometimes it's from decisions that were poor, sometimes mm -hmm. it's from situations that they were stuck in, mm -hmm. but all in all, God has a solution yes. for them. Yes. Um, so, so you mentioned the word house. Mm -hmm. You have houses, is that mm -hmm. right? Yes. Where women come and can stay. So this isn't like a program where they sign up and they have a, you know, they show up at 10 o'clock on Wednesday. Right. They arrive and they live there. 24 they seven, live there. they live there. And they live there as long as they need, per se, mm. like it's per individual. So if they get their own place and they have income and they, they're better equipped, uh, maybe it was just because uh, they had a broken relationship, um, divorce, whatever, and they needed help getting on their feet, it might be three months, four months, mm. and they're okay. They're ba better for, uh, than what they had. Um, and then there's others who are off the streets, healing from drugs, mm fresh, um, mm -hmm. maybe just out of rehab, and they need a little more time for brain healing. They need time to get uh, like established into a schedule, order in their life, because mm -hmm. that is chaos. Mm -hmm. And just um, knowing that people care and they're not gonna be mm -hmm. manipulated or controlled. Mm -hmm. So there's just a lot of those uh, different things that the need is there. And so, yes, uh, it is something that per individual, we decide how long are they going to stay. So it's a home, it's a community, it's support, and it's like a little family. Mm -hmm. And usually everybody supports each other. I don't have a lot of friction. If I do, it goes quickly or mm -hmm. we have a little intervention and mm -hmm. say, hey, what's the real issue here? Mm -hmm. So it's really God directs us divinely on how to get to the nitty gritty, get down mm -hmm. to the roots, um, get down to some inner healing. Uh, what, it, what beyond choices is really going on? What happens in the family's dynamic? How were you raised? You know, I did a statistic years ago when I first started and I asked them, um, how was your relationship with your mom or did you have your mm -hmm. mom in your life? And 100% mm -hmm. always said, my mom was never there. My mom was in prison. My mom was in addiction. My mom left me when I was young. My mom gave me up. There was always something going on with mom, mm. but now they're in a homeless situation, mm. struggling to maintain a home. Mm. And as you and I both know, our innate quality from God is to manage a home, mm. keep a home, make a house a home. And um, they struggle with that. And of course, there's other reasons mm -hmm. for all of that. Mm -hmm. Maybe perhaps why that there's a breakdown in the family or breakdown in the home. But that was 100%. It didn't matter if dad raised them. I mean, yes, that could be. Or if dad was not around, um, those statistics may have been there, but they weren't as strong mm. as it was with uh, lacking a mother and nurturing, mm. lacking love. Because you could be raised by dad and be strong and do okay, or you could, you know, have some things going on. But usually dads are key in supposed to be giving them identity. So if they had some sort of identity established by a dad that raised them, they were still better equipped and could quickly, you know, mm -hmm. move on. But it really is all about the, the root thing that they lack is love and nurturing. Yeah. Yeah. And so they missed out on that. Um, and, and so that, that's just what I've noticed. And I don't know, I mean, you know, God will keep revealing more into <laughs> that, but that was a key thing. And a key thing has been God through all of this. Absolutely. You know, we hear so much about mental health now. I hate to say it's politicized as a popular thing, but it kind of is, and it's important. We need that, but it is. We talk, we hear about mental health yeah. constantly, but we don't always hear about the God component yeah. that's necessary. So tell me how what Guiding Light does Yes. Is so directed by the Holy Spirit and God. Yeah. So how God leads us, of course, we don't stress about finances, number one, because he started this. 
He is the one that gave the outline of how we proceed in the program. So all the, the creative ideas that came when God had me write down, you know, what would I do if there was a house? Because he spoke that into my heart, mm -hmm. you know, to have one. I, I wasn't planning to. I never th had it on my radar. He said, do this help save these women and then everything from the beginnings of the creativity of the idea to the point of direct contact um, we pray with them and we seek the lord on who they are and what needs to be done for them um, and and so that is led by the holy spirit also um, just understanding the dynamics of where they're at and giving wisdom god's wisdom um, even through the scripture or talking to them the importance of prayer and how he leads us like even devotions they'll notice wow i opened up to this devotion this is exactly what i needed today so it's nourishment for them mm -hmm. for the whole day or they'll say you know i really need this job and i don't know if i'll get it but can we pray and then they get the job and they're like god heard our prayer <laughs> So it's almost like in their every day, they're getting um, just such enrichment of how God works in our lives and how his hand is upon them and how he has protected them. And the difference between good and evil, which mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about evil, mm -hmm. but it's prevalent, it's mm -hmm. real. And how do we have authority over that? How can we pray for God to use our power and authority in Christ to come against any wiles of the mm -hmm. enemy? that tries to put a foothold or mm -hmm. tempt them again or come into their lives and create disunity and division or conflict, you know? And so those things are taught, you know, the, do you see what's happening here? Is God a God of peace? Mm -hmm. And if he is and you love him and you receive Christ, then you are a person of peace. Therefore, no matter what comes mm -hmm. at you that would try to trigger you, you know, yeah. through your mental health or whatever, yeah. God gives you a sound mind. Right. And so um, we go to church on Sunday and uh, our worship songs. I say, hey, God can meet you right there in the worship songs. You know, if you want to do your worship and put your hands up, you can and love mm -hmm. him. And, and, you know, for those ones that have been unchurched and they're not really sure what to think, I say, hey, just come. You don't have to participate, but just mm -hmm. come because I believe in the presence of the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, things are going to be dealt with. They could be delivered, <laughs> you know, from yeah, things. Yeah, they can yeah. be set free and bondage. Um, some of them cry out and come to the altar and get mm -hmm. prayer. And then the, the chains begin to fall off, the scales from their yeah. eyes. They have this revelation that this loving God loves them. And mm -hmm. as we, I was talking about love, I was like, oh yeah, God is love. Yeah. Like he is that. And it's a different love. Truth. It's a yeah. love that they probably is so foreign to them from yeah. what they've, what their definition of love is. Yes, because maybe, which happens a lot, is they never received true unconditional love. Yeah. And the trust that they were supposed to have in parents or grandparents if they were raised by others or in foster care, mm -hmm. you know, that's a biggie too. Um, they didn't know of that true unconditional love. It was just enough through making sure maybe sometimes they had what they needed or not. And so they didn't experience that. But God's is an overwhelming, as you and I both know, when you mm -hmm. spend time with him, he fills you yeah. with his love. And they get to experience that. And they're, wow. they, they want to talk about it. And then they mm -hmm. want to share it. And they're like, you're not going to believe what happened. Or, hey, <laughs> when I read this, it came alive. I'm like, yes, yes, apply it to your life. Awesome. That is so great. Yeah, so it's it's been a great um, 10, 11 years um, because we do see that and some may not receive, you know, mm -hmm. some may still carry angst. Some may not, you know, open their hearts and then they don't stay long. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like whoever God sends to mm -hmm. the house, he sent there for a reason to save their lives, of course, yeah. you know, for them to have good deposits of good seed, for them to um, find out who, you know, they really are and be a piece to the puzzle that they've been searching for and knowing mm -hmm. him, right? Even if they're there for a short time. Mm -hmm or understanding what it is to love yourself and, and love um, community and love family and love home and security and be okay with rules. Yeah. You know, that's huge. Yeah. That, that rebellion is a lot of the reason why hmm. they're in situations, um, you know, especially with addiction, that rebellion takes over mm. and they get tempted and they fall prey. Yeah. So God is the one who helps them to see like, this is in place for my safety. 
I can't do that anymore. It doesn't work for me anymore. It doesn't give me the same pleasure. It doesn't help me in my life. It's a path of destruction. And then they have these aha moments like, I want to do better because now I know better. But it has to be through God giving them that revelation and not just mm. me saying, hey, you know, try to avoid that. Don't go back to that relationship, this, that. It has to be where they know that they know and they received it from God for them to say, I don't want to do that anymore. Right. And we're starting to see that more and more in these ladies. We have such a good group right now. Ah. Yeah. You know, so every year you host the Evening of Inspiration, which truly is inspirational. You bring some of the women who've been through the program, they share their testimonies. Yes. It is so encouraging. And not this past year, but the previous year in your 10 year, the 10 year anniversary, mm -hmm. you said something that I haven't forgotten. Mm -hmm. um, you said, they, they need a place to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But if they're constantly living chaos, they never have that ability to figure it out. We provide them a place to figure them out. Mm -hmm. So they can come away from their chaotic world yeah. and they probably bring some of the chaos in with them, yeah. but yet they enter a, they enter a dwelling mm -hmm. of peace and Christ-focused direction. Yes. And you provide them that opportunity to have calm Yes. And to, to actually let their minds come down mm -hmm. and start to think clearly. Yes. Because they're in survival mode. Yeah. And they carry that post-traumatic stress, you know, and it, it shows all over. And yes, I consider it a safe haven. Like our second home is called a resting place. Mm. Because that idea is so true. I mean, how many times do we go, 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 or we've got a lot of family things mm -hmm. or, you know, commitments that we made. And then we finally get to a point, ah, I really need to just sit here and rest. Rest is wonderful. And Lord, mm. I haven't spent enough time with you and mm. I need that time. And then things begin to come clear to us. Oh, I forgot to do this, so I need to do this. And then, um, then we have time for scripture. Well, it's the same with them, but it may not be commitments. It may just be chaos mm -hmm. and they're swirling. And then they come into the eye of their storm mm -hmm. with that peace and they start, things begin to come as truth to them and they settle down and that's why I call it brain healing mm. um, because their brain has to settle down. They're so used to anxiety. They're so used to, um, especially if they're on like crack cocaine or meth, it's a constant upper. And mm. so it's constant firing in their brain and they don't know how to rest or settle and they've been up for days or whatever. Mm. And so they do, they come into that calm and that peace. And I remember early on, the Lord spoke to me something about Tell them it's okay to be boring ah. huh. and you've got to care. Mm. So they come in hopeless and not caring. Well, I don't care. I'll just go use anyway. You don't like me mm. or, you know, this is bad and I might as well just give up because that's their go-to, their default from their PTSD, from their triggers. Immediately, it's the worst case scenario. So they might as well go back. Mm. And so saying those two things, you've got to care. You just got to start caring. So just care. Like I mm. care now. And then, you know, like, it's okay to be boring. It's okay to say no. Like, you're not missing out on anything. Mm -hmm. Really, you're missing out on the, op uh, the opportunity to go to hell. I mean, because if they're doing fentanyl or they're doing heroin, um, that's a 50-50 chance of death, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's okay. You're not missing anything. Yeah. And you don't want to go there anymore because you choose to be boring and sit and mm -hmm. rest and think and we have journaling, we have crafts mm. class, we have things to give creative outlets. Those give them time and they start to see what they're good at and what they're not good at. And I think one of the key things too is they show us as over time, after 30, like 30 days is always like the honeymoon phase, mm. right? But after 30 days, their true colors, their emotions, their personality traits start flaring up. And if you're not careful and you don't know personalities, differences, mm -hmm. you can start to see how their weaknesses come out versus their strengths. And you have to rein them in to say, this is why that's a strength, but you're not using it in that way. Mm -hmm. And then you, um, after about those next 30 days, then they start settling out and they're not battling anymore and they're not fighting for this power trip, you know, mm. and the rebellion's not flaring up. And this is all them getting out what's been in them. Yeah. So it has to come up and get out in order for it to be released for healing, right? That's how God works. Yeah. And then after that, you start to see it. Man, they're a real leader. 
And what are you seeing? You mentioned the word leader. Yeah. So you have ladies who've come into this program mm -hmm. in dire straits, mm -hmm. but you have the testimonies of success in Christ and moving into a new realm, what they've been called to become. Yes. So once they've come to, and it's also like Maslow's hierarchy has a lot of meaning to uh, what we can apply to this understanding. If you have your basic needs of uh, food, water, shelter, then you get your belonging and security and then and trust and you get, you know, all of those levels um, taken care of. You get to that peak self-actualization, which I think is identity in Christ. And what has happened is if they have put the effort in, they've put the time in, they've read the word, they see how this is changing the trajectory of their life. They see the blessings of God and they go after it. Then what happens is once they move out, they go and apply for jobs. They realize I can help the next person. Mm -hmm. So they may go like one particular one that um, came to us straight off the streets, drugs, heroin mm -hmm. for 30 years, um, lost her uh, husband to an overdose, mm -hmm. lost a son to overdose, mm -hmm. just frail. But as she was there, she took it for what it was. She wanted better for her life after all these years. And now she works in social services. Uh, she works in crisis, dealing with people with mental health mm -hmm. and addiction. Um, she gives back and she's good at it. Mm -hmm. And she is a leader. And I actually had her as staff at one point um, for a, a couple years or so, um, where she was able to invest in others because mm. that was her heart. Uh, there was another one um, who came to us like place after place that she went through. She had been through domestic violence, so rejection and abandonment mm. was huge in her. Um, she went to drugs because it was offered to her and she just wanted to do whatever her uh, mate was doing, her spouse was mm. doing. And so she just wanted to be a part of that life instead of him leaving her out. She wanted to be included and then the beatings came and she didn't know how to get out. But eventually she got out and then she found support people. And uh, she went from different places, different places, and then she came to us and then she started working. And we were like, man, you're really good good at that and, and you care about following mm. the rules and you care about making sure the door is locked at night and there's something about you and so she just kept following the lead of the Holy Spirit and eventually now she's used in capacities like administration mm. you know and has her own business Wow! so yeah. just a lot of things where if you can speak into their lives and see what it is and speak to it. I mean, they start tearing up like, how do you see that? What are you talking about? It's like, no, it's there. Like you and I can see it, but they can't. Mm -hmm. But you keep investing in that. And, and eventually they do. They become very um, mindful of that. They go after those positions and then they just thrive hmm. and do well. It's amazing when a person can grasp who they are in Christ yes. and can start to feel that, feel the heart change, feel that that heart of stone, like it talks about in Ezekiel, and turn into a heart of flesh yes. and feel the love that comes through. And that starts with you and your volunteers and your staff mm -hmm. loving them first mm -hmm. as Christ would love them. Yes. Yeah. Loving them right where they're at. And yeah. that's key for us in the body of Christ is not rejecting, not putting them aside or putting them in a box or a category or uh, having a stigma. And I don't know that we really do that. Maybe there are some that maybe still do. I, you know, I don't want to like speak against anything, mm -hmm. but I'm saying like we've really got to, to embrace like right where they're at, even if they come to church high, mm -hmm. even if they come just looking, you know, just really like they haven't taken care of themselves, mm -hmm. like just speak to them say hey can mm. i get you something to drink how are you doing today what's been going on and embracing that i i really see that really working where then people will know like they can at least have a little trust yeah. you have, it's really about trust building that um and and so i just um see how god kind of moves and is so effective in just saying embrace them mm. embrace them right where they're at and mm. tell them the truth and, and sometimes there's compromise and you don't want compromise. You don't want to say, hey, it's okay. Mm. You know, no, it's not. It's not okay. And I have different answers, but I want to tell you that God is so patient and so kind yeah. that he will reveal to you over time everything that you need to work on. And, you know, some people will say, well, I don't want to smoke cigarettes anymore. I just felt like God doesn't want me to do that. Okay, then do that. 
like I could tell you all day, you know, the effects <laughs> of smoking. And I tell you, I don't, we don't smoke on the property. You know, you have a designated place, but you got that revelation. Let's go, yeah. let's go. And you know what? God will do that over and over again. And so they have that like, yeah, I get it. I get it. And so they want more of that healing to come as God reveals to them. Hey, that's not good for you anymore. No, you don't want to go back to that drug because mm. they have that risk of relapse, right? Or, you know, going back to the same old, same old. No, you don't want to go what to, to what's familiar. Yeah. Stay in the safe place with God. You've been doing this now for more than 10 years. Yes. It has to be incredible to watch how God has been working all this time in these women. Yes. It, it, it's just an infusion of His hand, like, mm -hmm. in, in going into their life. And... Um, I think it's just uh, such a powerful thing when you allow God to be God. I mean, mm. even we, when we don't know what to say or what the next steps are, sometimes you just have to pull away and leave it to God because He's the one, He's the source of what helps direct their steps, you know. And our, our main verse that we, we use is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, mm. trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding, mm. but in all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. And so those unknown variables of what's yeah. going to happen. Are they going to go back? Are they ever going to come see us again or whatever, you know, or, or are they doing things? Sometimes God will give revelation to staff in the middle of the night. Like, I think this is going on and we really need to check into this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they do try to hide things. Um, but through the years, God has graced us. Uh, and I've had different staff in and out, but still he graces whoever's there to say, Hey, Let's be mindful of this. This is how we need to pray or this I think is going on and we need to address this. We really need to have an intervention. This one is not always like she's just, you know, she's not uh, coming through doing everything. And so the more that you help hold people accountable and responsible, mm -hmm. the more God can intervene to mm -hmm. help guide us. And he does. He guides it all. Wow. He guides them. Well, we're about out of time. Julianne, let's close by talking about how the community can help. You say that you rely on the Lord yep. for everything that you need. Yep. So our viewers are in that group. You mm -hmm. know, our viewers love the Lord too. So how can our viewers, how can the community help continue to do God's work through Guiding Light? Yeah, so definitely number one, pray for us. Pray that God um, continues to give us direction and the Holy Spirit is just present. That, that we're blessed. Pray blessings over us. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, you know, we always need supplies, just like any other house, paper towel, toilet papers, cleaning supplies, um, laundry detergent, things for them to be set up like silverware and cups and dishes mm -hmm. and, you know, household items for them. Uh, we do get an influx of clothing. So we're constantly going through clothing, but they're so grateful. Um, and of course, fi uh, financial donations, those are always key. They help us even with maintenance. They help us with, um, you know, like car maintenance and everything else that we have, bills to pay, you know, all the utilities mm -hmm. and things that we have at these multiple locations. So we have two um, transitional houses that we have, two step down that are more like rentals, um, but all that comes back in and um, to the to, uh, guiding light. Mm -hmm. But just knowing like, even if there's a specialty class that somebody wants to give, whether it's exercise class, mm -hmm. you know, and just show them the fundamentals of why it's important to exercise and maybe take them on walks, that's a cool way. Um, you know, maybe someone is really good at, and they've had a lot of wisdom for inner healing and prayer and listening. Mm -hmm. That might be a key thing that somebody can come in and do. Um, sometimes we um, don't always have like financial uh, budgeting classes because, you know, someone goes on vacation or the cook, uh, cooking class teacher um, isn't always available. They could be like a backup for that or if they're sewing or anything that can give like basic truths, um, we could really use that help. All right. Yeah. A little bit of everything, yeah. anything, whatever God lays on someone's heart is That's probably right. going to be. Okay, we are out of time, unfortunately, but of course you can see the information on the screen on how to connect with Guiding Light and Julianne, or if you have any questions, of course you can always contact us, contact me here at TV44, and we'll make sure we get you connected. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so welcome. much for sharing. All right, and thank you for watching this edition of In the Community.